Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have a few announcements today. We'll be doing handball practice again today from 2 p.m. to 3 and then choir practice at 3. If you haven't picked them up yet, the Seeking Daily Devotional Cards for Lent are still available at either entrance of the sanctuary. It falls along with the Lenten calendar. On March 1st at 6 p.m., there will be a Bible study in Heritage Hall. To go along with the Daily Devotional Cards, the Upper Room Devotionals are also available at both sanctuary entrances. And you can pick up your copy today. Today, after Sunday School at 11, they'll be doing the Open Table Meeting. Oh, never mind. Postponed. That's canceled. No Open Table Meeting today. Pick up your March newsletter at the front entrance if you didn't receive it via email. And as always, please fill out the attendance pad at the end of the queue so we know that you were here to worship with us. I have a few announcements to add this morning as well. First is that our service is going to be ordered just a little bit differently today. During my sermon and our pastoral prayer time, we are going to be entering into a practice that is called Daily Examine. It is a prayer practice by St. Ignatius that I'm going to walk us through at the close of my sermon. So in order to keep the flow of that going, our offering is going to be after our affirmation of faith. During the prayer time, I'm going to walk you through each of the five steps. We will be mostly in silent prayer for that time, and then we will close together with the Lord's Prayer. Today, our theme is, Who Will You Listen To? And as I was prepping my sermon for today and thinking about the voices that we listen to and how oftentimes they get muddled and we lose our focus on God's voice, couldn't figure out why you should listen to me today. <laughs> and so that is why we are going to engage in this prayer practice so that we might open ourselves up to hear God's voice on this first Sunday of Lent. Most importantly, I hope you know that whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Listen. There is hope to be found here. Listen. God calls you by name here. Listen. There is love in our lives here. This world is full of chatter, so may we do our best to listen. God is speaking. Let us worship. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together him in the, our hymn for the faith we sing, the little black book, 2113, Lamb of God.
power of faith, the affirmation of faith can be found on your insert or on the screen. <coughs> you are invited to read the yellow word on the screen. In a world full of noise, we believe that God is speaking. In a world full of chaos, we believe that God is singing. In a world full of temptation, we believe that God is healing. Church, who will you listen to? We will listen to God, our Creator, friend, and God. Church, what will you listen for? We will listen for water in the desert, for the wind of the Spirit, for the laughter of children, for the sound of open doors, and for God's voice who calls us to love.
still have one more octave of handbells. So if anybody still wants to come and ring, we'll make room for you.
one of today's scripture readings comes from the book of Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, and chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded, commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it. Or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her. And he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made wine cloths for themselves. Now please join me in singing hymn 269, Lord who throughout these 40 days. <coughs> Scripture reading comes from Matthew 4, verses 1 through 11. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Scripture. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted forty days and forty nights, and afterwards he was banished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, 
so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Worked like that. 
that it was predictable and merit-based, and I did this, so now I get this. But what if that isn't the kind of seeking we are yearning for in this season? What if instead our seeking created in us a faith that is ever-growing, adaptive, resilient, and filled with awe? What if we are able to bring our biggest, most honest questions about our purpose, our faith, our identity, our future to God so that we might open ourselves up to how the Holy Spirit is moving among us? Throughout Lent, we will be asking questions. And I invite you into the discomfort of the possibility that we might not find clear answers. Or we might find answers we didn't expect or didn't want. And maybe the answers will be, or will be so complex that it will take us years to parse them out. This morning, we are asking the question, who will you listen to? There are so many answers to that question. And Reverend Sarah Speed wrote a poem with this question as the title. It says, Twitter or the BBC, the ads on late night television, the wind as she blows, the echo of children playing, the quiet of the snow, the ice bucket challenge, the phone when it rings, your pastor, your mother, your doctor, your gut, the tension in your shoulders, the restaurant singing happy birthday, audiobooks, TED Talks, the rhythm of the music, the coffee drip in the morning, your therapist, the wisdom of the Enneagram, the way your heart comes alive when you're being creative, the man on the corner asking for change, the kid on the subway selling chocolate, the labels on the makeup bottle that promise timeless beauty, the magazines that tell you you need timeless beauty, astrology, the Dow Jones, the hiss of the radiator, the pitter-patter of little feet, Financial advisors, the top 40 pop, the top 40 country, the New York Times, the rumor mill, the book of Psalms, your sense of self, Jesus, when he says, I am always with you. In both of our texts this morning, we hear the devil slash tempter slash serpent approach Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and Jesus in the wilderness. We witness their opposite responses. We watch as Adam and Eve listen to the serpent's voice while Jesus is able to withstand the temptation. This is the challenge we're presented with. How do we discern God's voice in the midst of all that we hear? And how do we respond when we get it wrong? I take a lot of comfort in knowing that there is not only one way in which God speaks to us. In 1 Kings, Elijah expects to hear God's voice in the wind and the earthquake and the fire. But instead, it was a still, small voice. God speaks to us through our circumstances as he gives Jonah a pretty clear message through a whale. In Exodus, we watch as God speaks to Moses through the burning bush and to Joseph through his dreams. 
God speaks to us through the wisdom literature and the Psalms. And we hear God speaking in new and fresh ways whenever we read Scripture. Because we know that that book is alive. So this morning, instead of continuing to listen to me talk, we are going to enter into a time of intentional prayer, intentional listening. More than 400 years ago, St. Ignatius Loyola encouraged prayer-filled mindfulness by proposing what has been called the daily examine. The examine is a technique of prayerful reflection on the days, on the events of the day, in order to detect God's presence and to discern God's direction for us. We will enter into this time of prayer, and I will walk you through the five steps. You'll be invited to assume whatever posture of prayer is comfortable for you. The altar is open if at any point you wish to pray there. And at the close of our time of prayer, we will say together the Lord's Prayer. And so as we prepare for our time of prayer, we want to lift up the joys and the concerns of our community. Our full prayer list can be found on the back of the bulletin. Are there others that we wish to lift up this morning? Seeing none, I invite you now to enter into an attitude of prayer. Assume whatever position you feel comfortable in. The altar is open. God is speaking. We are listening. I invite you now to become aware of God's Look back on the events of the day in the company of the Holy Spirit. The day may be a bit confusing to you, a blur, a jumble, a muddle. Ask God to bring clarity and understanding. of our relationship with God. Walk through your day in the presence of God and note its joys and delights. Focus on the day's gifts. Look at the work you did, the people you interacted with. What did you receive from these people? What did you give them? Pay attention to the small things, the food you ate, the sights you saw, and other seemingly small pleasures. God is in the details.
attention to your emotion. One of St. Ignatius's great insights was that we detect the presence of the Holy Spirit in the movements of our emotion. Reflect on the feelings you experienced during the day. Boredom, elation, resentment, compassion, anger, confidence. What is God saying? God will most likely show you some ways that you fell short. Make a note of these sins and faults. But look deeply for other implications. Does a feeling of frustration perhaps mean that God wants you to consider a new direction in some area of your work? Are you concerned about a friend? Perhaps you should reach out to her in some way. Next, choose one teacher of the day and pray from it. Ask the Holy Spirit to direct you to something during the day that God thinks is particularly important. It may involve a feeling, positive or negative. It may be a significant encounter with another person or a vivid moment of pleasure or peace. Or it may be something that seems rather insignificant. Look at it. Pray about it. Allow the prayer to arise spontaneously from your heart. Whether intercession, praise, repentance, or gratitude.
spirit of gratitude. Your life is a gift, and it is adorned with gifts from God. And now, as children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the close of our service, we will you are invited to stand as you are able as we sing together. Who will you listen to? The words can be found on the other side of your insert from the affirmation of faith. They will also be on the screen. Margaret is going to play through the tune once. It is a tune that is found on our very own hymnal. So, but she will play it through once so that we can get it in our minds. And then we will sing the three verses together. Please stand as you are able. Thank you. 